thank you very much yeah so before we start um, i think that was one of the most interesting panel discussion that i have heard uh, i mean the amount of depth it had i made couple of notes of couple of points that was discussed in that uh, specifically uh, professor abdul rahman omar speaking about uh, basically human touch humanizing uh, uh, you know the customer experience or a patient experience and he also mentioned something very specific about you know uh, we do the thing that we do and the profit will come i think that's something that very interesting and i want to take it from there and uh, discuss something uh, a little bit depth about that so taking from what uh, professor said uh, we've been doing something very similar uh, in the past so exotel uh, we operate in about 65 countries more than about 7000 plus customers and we wanted to understand uh, why certain customers uh, specifically in a commoditized market healthcare is also getting commoditized uh, you look at other industries bfsi banking everybody offers a very similar kind of services and how do you stand out doing that and while doing that we wanted to understand a bit more in terms of what is that brands doing right where they are able to do successful so we looked at our 7000 plus customers and we tried to understand what is that they are doing right one of the interesting thing that came out was most of the conversation that these brands have with their customers it could be healthcare it could be banking it could be any industry uh, and the the percentage of positive conversation that happens are very high it's as high as 94% for some of the a uh, healthcare organization and and the result is directly impacted on in terms of their profits also the more the positive conversation the brands are having their profits are high and sometimes most of these companies are growing over 30% uh, in terms of their revenues so the question is what makes a positive conversation anybody want to take a guess when you say a conversation is positive what makes it a positive conversation or what what is the prerequisite for a positive conversation it could be a conversation with anybody it need not be a business conversation it could be a conversation with a friend a family children parents uh, just give it thought in say last week or two uh, what are the positive conversation that you have and why is that a positive conversation anybody want to take a guess sorry interest yeah right any other thought brings joy satisfaction okay um, everybody has say friends families everybody right uh, and always the conversations are not always positive sometimes it's positive conversation sometimes it can get little intense as well but one person will always have a positive conversation uh, all of us will always have one person good listener uh, you want to categorize them uh, let's say obviously you will not have always positive conversation with the spouse so who else sorry generally uh, with a friend you will never have a negative conversation even if it is about something bad the conversation is always positive so if the conversation with friends are always positive why is that conversation not be a negative or what does the friend has uh, that makes that conversation positive any wild thought sorry not being judgment right bond and the trust exactly okay so you can summarize all of them and say it's the context let's say if i meet a friend after 10 years and i don't need to build that relationship right even after 10 years we have not spoken the moment we see each other we remember what did we do in school college or in previous work organization 
basically it's the context that makes the conversation positive today uh, i think uh, today panel was also discussing and specifically from uh, novitas mr kartik said our conversations are very transactional and that's true with every business and that's true with healthcare right Uh, imagine a conversation that is happening a customer reaching out saying that i was supposed to get a report i have not got it how that conversation will go or all the conversation or the systems that we prepare including the ai is to address those transactional conversation now imagine if those conversations are friend like conversation just for an example i'm calling to book an appointment for a routine checkup and the person on the other side says hey your mother had an arthritis uh, the result has come uh, when you are coming you are also getting your mother imagine the amount of information that somebody needs to have a conversation like this so the question is is it possible for a contextual based conversation to have three things are important you need to know the state the state is basically their presence uh their what has happened so far which is their history it knowing that i am a diabetic or not is very important for the guy who's on the other side similarly if i'm calling for something is it something very specific that i'm going through or is it something uh, very generic then the intent of that conversation why i'm having this conversation why i'm calling you or why i'm sending a whatsapp message to a hospital Uh, or why i'm going and posting something on social media saying that their services is bad the the state the intent and the most important is the emotion of it that means at that given point of time what am i feeling uh, or what is leading me to have that kind of a conversation this is something that we wanted to address um, about 3 years back which is where we raised about 100 million in equity we acquired about four or five organizations so far uh, so basically wanted to build everything so so this is what it is today if you look at you you look at any hospital any healthcare organization or even outside uh, healthcare you look at a bank you look at a bfsi automotive you will always have a tools everybody has a crm everybody has a communication platform mostly everybody is already on whatsapp uh, everybody supports their customer on social media and all of this is there still and i think everybody in ua would have faced the moment you say you get a credit card bill on and you pay it on the first of every month on seventh you still get a message saying that your credit card bill is due please ignore if already paid why is that somebody getting that message in spite of having all the best crms they could have best communication channels they could have data warehousing you churn a lot of data and trying to understand the customer still you end up having a conversation with your customers which are very transactional and the reason that we figured out is that the conversations all disconnected that means i book an appointment and i would have already asked for a reschedule but appointment confirmation guy doesn't know about it so he's still calling you to reconfirm the appointment which is a, i have already rescheduled bringing everything together we basically call it as a customer interaction data platform so all the customer data at one place and making sense of that data will make that conversation more contextual uh, of course uh, i think everybody in uh, previous panel also spoke about humanizing it uh, everybody also spoke about having a context having an empathy into the conversation but to do all that what you need to know is you know having that understanding that customer now imagine if there's a call coming in and you expect them uh, expect an agent uh, receiving a call center agent to receiving a call or somebody at a um, appointment booking receiving a call how will they get all this information that's one problem the second problem is even if i receive all this information how would i make sense when i am already on a call because i have hardly a millisecond to do that so these are some of the challenges that um, healthcare is are facing today uh, the major revenue leak that we see uh, globally 
UA is still much better, but globally is patient no-shows. I have my set of doctors, I have certain appointments that I'm booking, and a large chunk of this patient doesn't turn up. And why do they don't turn up? Either they forgot about their appointment, or they booked an appointment with multiple places. <clears throat> Sorry. And, and hence, basically, you're blocking a time of a doctor, which is a clear revenue loss that happens. The second is ineffective outreach. All the conversation today are transactional in nature. What it is making is, uh, it, it's basically you're creating more pain to the patient. And apart from all the industry, healthcare is, is the most critical one because none of the customer comes being happy to you. Uh, unlike an automotive or a bank, customer always comes in a healthcare when he's in distress. And you are just adding more into the uh, agony of it. And of course, silos, disconnected patient interaction. I have a vendor supplying WhatsApp to me. I have another vendor supplying, say, a contact center to me. Somebody supplying an AI. And all of this will not sing together. There's a, a disconnection which is available. <clears throat> and this is an um, interesting research done by uh, Presgani where 62% of, and this is a global data by the way, said 62% people are discouraged because if they need to reach out to their healthcare provider, um, if they fail to reach, reach them on time, it could be putting them on hold, not able to reach, this is a very common problem. And another interesting factor is 48% today says, I booked an appointment, then I need to reschedule, but it's a pain for me to reschedule. That means I need to call somebody to reschedule or, uh, and it, they have to go through a process explaining why they need to reschedule. So the easiest thing for me to do is not to show up and which is where no shows are about 30%. So what's the solution uh, to do that? The first thing is, um, basically uh, preventing revenue loss, which is taking care of the no-shows that is happening, uh, which is basically you are making it very easy for the customer in booking, rescheduling appointment. And there are a lot of tools. You already have those tools which you can use, which is basically you can use a voice call, uh, a complete automated call, getting a reminder saying that you have an appointment, uh, press one to confirm, press two if you want to reschedule, the moment he says reschedule or cancel, a human can come in and give a new slot to them. Or similarly, can be done through a bot. Uh, AI can take care of this completely where a system proactively sends a message, you have an appointment, do you want to uh, confirm you're coming? He says, no, I cannot. And you can give them other slots that are available. So what you're doing is basically you are freeing up the slot which has been occupied, which you know for sure this person is not going to turn up. And what we at Exotel do is, to do this, you don't need to build a uh, huge tech in the back end. You, if you want to run this tomorrow, you can run it tomorrow by putting everything on cloud, where you don't have to worry about uh, is the language English or Arabic, what are the TTS that are needed. Everything has been taken care by Exotel and you can start running, make thousands of call from the word go. <clears throat> And the second is um, the problem that we spoke about. Sorry, I'll skip to this. Uh, sorry, the screenshot is for banking, but this is what we are talking about where you have multiple system and the customer data is in multiple different system. Now, the, the easiest thing that you can do is bring all the data, the moment the interaction comes, that means a call comes, a chat comes, or somebody goes and start talking about you on social media, you get to know who's this customer. Now, uh, and you can customize, you can integrate your backend system, bring all the data at one place and tell the agent, hey, this is the customer, this is how you need to take care. Now, the problem with this is, when I have all of this, I, when I'm on a call, I would hardly look at two, three things. I will not still get a context of a conversation. I can get what, what has happened in the previous interaction I can get his emotion, whether he's angry or uh, happy, but I still don't have a context. And that is where I think today a lot been spoken about 
AI and very specifically generative AI is kind of solves that problem. Rather than a human reading all that and making sense, generative AI summarize everything in two statements and says, hey, this customer had, uh, taking the previous example, his mother had arthritis, they did a test, uh, their result is bad from previous test, uh, you need to inquire about it and also suggest him that he also has to do an arthritis test because his mother has it. So something very simple in two statements, three statements, uh, system can summarize which, which will help the people who are having a conversation. It could be a front office, back office, call center, uh, nurses can get this information readily available. <clears throat> yeah. I think we spoke about the generative AI. And there's one more um, pretty interesting thing that uh, we are trying to explore or try doing back in India is, let's say I have, I as a customer for whatever chronic I get admitted in a hospital. Now, if people want to inquire about my health, they call um, a board number and they route them to three, four different places where I, then I get a right information. Similarly, there are other family members trying to reach out uh, or uh, the patient could be in uh, ICU, the patient could be uh, in a surgery, general ward. Now you have different people taking care of the patient. You can basically, what you can do is for a patient of that nature, you assign one single number, which is a very short duration. Let's say for next five days, you call this number to inquire about your, uh, your relative's health and internally based on what stage he is in, it gets routed automatically uh, to that department so that you get right information at the right time. Yeah. So uh, from a solution standpoint, this is what we are trying to do. Uh, we basically bought all the tech that is needed to run an operation. Uh, so today, uh, if you look at most of the organization, they're heavily invested in their infra and tech and IT, and some of their project runs months, if not years. Uh, the reason is there are multiple systems you bring in and try to stitch them together. Uh, and this is something that we realized three years back, and we bought basically the CCAS, CPAS, which is your communication platform, your customer experience platform and generative AI all in a single place. What this enables you to do is you decide to do something or try to experiment with something and you can start running it next day. You don't have to wait for a month to be implemented. Yeah. And finally about Exotel, uh, uh, we are one of the largest uh, communication provider, uh, of course, because we are from India, which has 1.4 billion population, but we run more than 70 million daily conversation. Uh, and uh, this is completely scalable and scaled down without even thinking about the backend infra that is needed. We operate in about 60 countries and about 7,000 overall customers. Uh, yeah, I think I'll skip this. Thank you very much.